an excellent morning. Good morning. morning. You guys seem pretty, uh, pretty quiet and laid back this morning. It is um, very good to be with you. Stephen, thank you for those uh, introductory uh, comments. Uh, Stephen, you just gave me a promotion. I, ever, I think you put Amtrak under Caltrans. <laughs> I would love to take over Amtrak as well, but we just fund and, and partner with them, uh, uh, and they've been uh, good partners for many years. But uh, thank you. Uh, and, and thank you to, to Volvo, to the team members that I've had a chance to meet, uh, Ray, Dave, Melker, your, your, your president. Thank you uh, so much for this partnership um, opportunity uh, with, with Caltrans. Uh, and, and thank you as well to our local and, and regional partners at South Coast. Michael, good to meet you. Thanks for uh, the work that you're doing at the, at the local and, and regional level. Uh, in, in, this, uh, in this part of the state. And to the EPA and CARB, our friends uh, who make sure that we at Caltrans are behaving environmentally, uh, thank, you to, thank you to them as well. Uh, but bef before I move on just to, to some other remarks, uh, very important, if you haven't had a chance to meet uh, some of our key leaders that are here today from, from Caltrans, uh, Michael Bochamp, Michael, if you could wave real quick. Uh, Michael is our is our District 8 uh, director. He's responsible for uh, a lot of the work that happens a little south of here, a little southeast of where we are today. Uh, Michael, thank you for your leadership uh, in, in District 8 uh, for, for so many years. Uh, and Jim Rogers is one of uh, Michael's uh, deputies. Jim Rogers is our deputy director for maintenance. Uh, Jim uh, deserves a lot of credit because uh, the equipment that we're talking about today, uh, a lot of that work, uh, the partnership happened through his, his leadership. So thank you as well, Jim, for uh, leading your maintenance team to explore uh, and to be innovative uh, and, and look, into this, uh, look into this arena even more um, as we, we face the challenges we face. Um, as Stephen mentioned already, um, let, let me just talk a little bit about the challenge before us and, and what uh, we're, uh, we're hoping for. Uh, in the future uh, at, in the California uh, transportation system. Number one, our three foundational principles are number one, safety. We need to have a safer transportation system, uh, no doubt. We have a lot of issues related to fatalities and serious injuries happening on our transportation system. That's something we've got to address. Number two is equity, the fact that we know there haven't been as many equitable outcomes for people uh, as it relates to transportation throughout the state and of course throughout the country as well. Uh, but third, uh, and just as important as the former two, is climate action. That's our, uh, that's our third one. Uh, and m Stephen mentioned the fact that we have 50,000 uh, miles of, uh, of highway that we oversee in the state. A lot of attention gets directed towards people who are driving, people who are commuting. And it makes sense. We have more super commuters, what we call super commuters, in this state than any other state. Uh, I think half a million people in this state drive 90 minutes a day, pre-pandemic, 90 minutes a day uh, uh, to work and 90 minutes back home. So three hours spent on the road. But uh, despite the fact that the attention is, is being paid there, uh, we know uh, this particular arena, the off-road uh, part of things, is where we also need to pay a lot of attention, some keen attention. Um, here, and here's uh, roughly why. Today, we have roughly $13 billion, $13 billion worth of uh, construction work underway at Caltrans today, $13 billion. In the future, well, actually, in the pipeline, I should say, not in the future, in the pipeline, in various other phases, there are roughly $8 billion, $8 billion worth of work. So in a nutshell, $20 billion. A lot of this is due to in increased revenue that we've uh, had. We had an SB1. Uh, passed in 2017 to increase revenue uh, for transportation for our state. But also, I think many of us know in the room what's the conversation that's happening in D.C. Uh, the fact that there is an infrastructure bill that is pending, uh, that, is, uh, that is moving forward, and we uh, will likely see. And that will mean additional work, uh, in addition to that $20 billion that I just mentioned, that will be entering the pipeline. Today we have roughly 900, almost 900 off-road uh, equipment uh, at Caltrans. Uh, and a majority of that is, of course, uh, not surprisingly, diesel powered. So as that work comes in, as more work comes into Caltrans, 
and we have this uh, 900 roughly off-road uh, e equipment, uh, we are going to need to turn that equipment over uh, slowly. And partnerships and discussions like this with Volvo, um, and uh, just to be careful, uh, any other OEM, <laughs> uh, will, will be important to us as we continue to uh, expand and do a lot of that work. I think many of you also know that 40%, 40% of the GHG in California uh, comes from this sector, from the transportation sector. Um, and some accounts, it goes up to nearly 50%. Uh, if you account for oil and fuel production, almost 50% of the bad air uh, comes from the transportation sector. And you say, now you, you say, well, you know, why, why is that such a big deal? Why is that so important? Most other states, it's in the 30s, it's in the 20s. Nationally, nationally, excuse me, the number is 29%. So California, almost 50%. Nationally, the number is 29%. So we know this is an area uh, that we're going to have to do, uh, going to have to do more work in. So excited uh, about this partnership uh, that we've undertaken with Volvo. Uh, really appreciate the, um, the, the, uh, the innovation, the pioneering uh, of this effort. Uh, my boss, the governor, Governor Newsom, has made this issue of climate action an absolute priority. Not only is he leading uh, us in the state, but he's leading nationally on this front and even internationally. I think you've seen his interest. He's put forward some ex executive orders uh, by 2035. Every single uh, on-road vehicle, every single on-road vehicle manufactured in the state uh, in a mere 14 years will have to be electric, will have to be zero emission, I would say, a ZEV. Uh, so 14 years from now, uh, and the, the pressure's on to do that. A lot of OEMs are stepping up um, and, and getting prepared and, and, and leading the way to do it. I'll close with this. Um, Ray, you mentioned how important this, this, this is for people. Uh, part of the connection that a lot of people are yet to make, that people are not making yet, um, is the impact on uh, people's lives, not just the people who day-to-day -day work for, for uh, Jim and Michael who sit in this equipment and have to deal with the loud noise and all the pollution that comes along with it, that this will ease, but the people we serve, the people we serve. There have been two fires um, in this state um, that have been uh, just devastating over the last couple of months. Uh, the Calda fire, which is only 45 minutes from where I live, um, and in the eastern part of Sacramento, uh, and the Dixie Fire um, in the northern part of the state. I, I got a chance to go up and visit the Dixie Fire roughly a month ago to see the aftermath of the impact of it. Uh, and walking through the town of Greenville, uh, California, uh, population uh, 900 prior to the fire, population probably 10 when I was there, um, it, it can't help but hit you can't help but hit you in the heart as you think about um, the property, the lives uh, that have been devastated and probably won't ever return to the same, to the norm, um, again. The folks in Greenville and that community, they're going to try to rebuild. They're going to try to come back. But um, it's going to be hard. It's going to take years. Um, and I know we in public service and you in the private sector increasingly bear responsibility to make sure that even though the work that we do is not necessarily starting those fires, we know it's exasperating those fires. Um, and that there's more we can do to make sure that we can prevent fires, floods, mudslides, all these extreme weather events that are happening, that there's more that we can do to prevent them. Uh, that's a big part of that climate action responsibility we have at Caltrans. So thank you again uh, to Volvo for pioneering and leading and, and pushing the way on an, on an effort like this. We're glad to uh, partner with you uh, in this effort and, and see the many successes that's going to come, uh, not only in project delivery, but ultimately for the people of the state. Thank you.